first question is from Alexis Swayze. How do you cut without ruining your metabolism? You know, I, when people say things That's our like, fault right there. I know, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. I, you know. It's good, though, though, so we can address it, because, you know, I, I don't want to be a part of that, that uh, you know, oh, your metabolism is broken, or your you, you, your metabolism in Sal's... Yeah. I've heard Sal say this multiple times. I always times. have to reverse how I'm eating. It's mm. doing what you, you want it to do. It's actually a health... Uh, it's, the, it's, it's a sign a, of a healthy metabolism. Right, it's responding. It's adapting. Yeah, it's adapting. Yeah. It's responding to what you're doing. Now, the problem is that just most people approach weight loss wrong and so they and they just really they put themselves in a less advantageous place you know they they go into the new year they want to lose you know 15 or 20 pounds and the first thing that they do and they come off of not exercising eating like garbage and then they go in the new year and it's like boom i'm gonna have two salads a day and a, a meal of chicken breast and broccoli and rice and that's it and then i'm gonna fucking go to the gym for an hour run on the treadmill for a half hour lift weight and like or go to my favorite class of circuit training and what happens is you you give the body way less calories than what it was just used to. You start pushing it and uh, it, trying to put out more energy. And all the metabolism does is it becomes efficient. It goes, oh, wow, she or he is not going to feed me very many calories and they're going to push me. I need to really slow down and conserve energy because I don't know if I'm going to be getting my ass kicked like this every single day and only fed this. And so your metabolism is doing exactly what you told it it's to do. Called, it's called metabolic adaptation. And again, <laughs> just like Adam said, um, it, it, it this process evolved for thousands of years where humans, you know, we went for long periods of time without food. We needed to move a lot. For most of human history, uh, it, life was relative was pretty damn active, especially in comparison to modern life. It was very active. If you wanted water, there wasn't a faucet right there. You had to walk to get the water and, and bring it back. If you wanted food, you had to kill it or or pick it and find it. You had to cook it or crush it so you could digest it. Um, you, 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 you didn't sit very often. You probably sat at the end of the day. Uh, maybe around a fire. So you were active and food was scarce. And so we evolved to have these metabolisms that learned how to be very efficient, which is a very, this is a good thing. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this. The only problem is today we live in a completely different environment. We live in an environment where uh, food is extremely available and it's hyper palatable. You could have pretty much any type of food you want available to you at a very, very low cost, and you can have it available to you in a very short period of time. Now we're at the point, in fact, you could order whatever you want, not even have to get up. It comes right to your door, and boom, you've got a delicious, high-calorie uh, meal and low activity or whatever. So we live in an environment now where we want a metabolism, where it becomes beneficial to have a fast metabolism. In the past, again, for most of human history, it was advantageous to have a slower, more efficient, thrifty metabolism. Well, today that's the opposite. If you have a if you have an efficient metabolism, uh, you're more likely to gain more weight, um, and you can't eat as much and get away with it. So, how do we deal with this? What do we do? Uh, well, there's a couple strategies. One, um, when you reduce your calories, don't do it so dramatically for so long. So right. you don't want to do a dramatic cut for for too too long. If you were to answer this very like simplistically, that would be it, right? Don't go for too long and too hard. That's number one. Number two, though, this is an important one is you have to send a counter signal. You have to send a signal to the body that says, hey, <laughs> we need to uh, we need to do things that prioritize a faster metabolism. Now, it's an indirect effect, but what you're essentially doing when you work out, if you do it properly, is you're telling the body, I need strength and muscle. When you're sending a signal to build strength and muscle, the side effect of that is a hotter, faster metabolism because in order to get stronger, and you have to build more muscle, and more muscle burns more calories. So your body's getting the signal that says, hey, calories are low. However, we need lots of strength. So what ends up happening when you lift weights properly while you're cutting your calories get leaner is you either, A, get a metabolism that doesn't adapt quite as much, it doesn't slow down quite as much because you need to build muscle, or B, if you do it really well, you actually can do the opposite and cause a speed up in the metabolism. But that also requires you not cutting your calories so much. In fact, sometimes you want to bump them a little bit first with the muscle building to give yourself a fast metabolism. Or, or run a mini cut followed by a mini bulk, mm -hmm. right? So don't stay, like to your point of not staying in a cut very long, which, you know, uh, for me, that means nowhere longer, between, somewhere between two and six weeks, six being very long, uh, two being pretty short. So somewhere I like to fall in between that. 
I'm going to interrupt that cut with at least a one week uh, surplus or at least caloric maintenance week. So if you are somebody who's trying to uh, reduce body fat and you figure out that your body stays the same at about 2000 calories and so you start eating you know, 1700 calories a day to lose weight, you've been doing that for about three weeks, four weeks or so, you feel like progress is stalled. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on a diet for the next week that's more like 2,000 to 2,200 calories every single day for a good solid week. And we're going to focus a lot on trying to build strength during that time and then come back again to the, the cut and maybe less dramatic, right? So you come from 2,200, maybe you just drop down to 18 or 1,900. And ultimately, my goal is really, can I lean you out uh, while I also slowly teach your body to be able to eat more calories? I mean, that's why no matter what your goal is, whether it's trying to build or to lose body fat, I start everybody in a... a you know, at least a calorie maintenance. Like I, if I, if I assess your diet, even if it's bad, right, bad food or, you know, mm -hmm. high calorie, uh, you know, empty calorie type foods, alcohol, fast food, things that aren't ideal for us. And I see that you're eating 3000 calories and your goal is to lose 15 pounds. I'm not going to start you on your diet at 25 or 20. I'm going to start at 3000 calories, mm -hmm. but I'm going to just change around the foods that you're eating. I'm going to give you more nutrient dense foods, but keep your calories the same and in, introduce exercise. That alone should send a signal to the body to build muscle and get leaner. And my real goal is actually to increase calories to help speed the metabolism up. Yeah. Remember this, it, it honestly was not that long ago. It was a blink of an <laughs> eye. When you look at all the, the, the amount of time that modern humans have been around on earth, it wasn't that long ago that have that we suffered from the effects of not of having too little calories. Humans died, and there was lots of malnutrition. Those were the big, two of the biggest killers of uh, of humans was we just didn't have enough, and so our bodies evolved to adapt to that. Now today is a very different time. Today in modern societies, very few people die from not having enough calories. Far more people, far more. In fact, the largest killer, the number one killer of people in modern societies is because they have too much. So a great buffer against that is to develop and build a body that can burn those calories off. You know, it's interesting. When you look at the studies on carbs, fats, saturated fats, sugar, it's, it's really interesting. In the context of a low-calorie diet, you could get away with a lot. You, in the context of a high-calorie diet, lots of saturated fat becomes bad for a lot of people. Lots of sugar becomes bad for a lot of people. When your calories are low uh, or when you're burning more than you're eating or burning as much as you're eating, I should say, rather than low calories, those things don't become so much of a problem. A faster metabolism in today's day and age is a phenomenal buffer against that, which is why the most, uh, the number one way you should be exercising today if you live in the modern world. Now, if you're a hunter-gatherer, this may not apply to you. But I'm sure if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not a hunter gatherer. Otherwise, you'd be a weird one with a cell phone and a, you know, and podcast <laughs> access. Um, you need to lift weights, go to the gym, and get stronger. Here's the other thing: with diet, uh, high protein diets tend to even when people do the hard cut and do lots of cardio. High protein diets also seem to contribute to a better, in, in terms of modern life, adaptation of the metabolism. So I, it doesn't necessarily slow down as much, and it's probably because of, there's an indirect effect. High protein diets tend to preserve more muscle and build more muscle. So uh, there you go. So again, the ruined metabolism, you know, I know we use that term uh, in, in the past uh, to kind of illustrate our point. It's not a broken metabolism. It's doing exactly what it wants to do. But because you live in the modern world, you want to be lean and you want to be able to enjoy the food it's around less you. less advantageous. We want a fast metabolism.